Hello, and welcome to this episode of Canadian Fungi Supply How To. In this video, we'll be going over how to do a grain to grain transfer in front of a laminar flow hood. Now, you don't need a flow hood to do a grain to grain transfer. You can just adapt these techniques and movements inside of a still air box. So, let's get going. So, here I am spraying down some kitchen towel with some 70% isopropyl alcohol. And what I'm going to do is rub down the donor jars just to sanitize them, making sure to get the entire jar. As you can see, I'm going to focus on the spot in between the jar lid and the jar. I forgot that jar. I'm going to go back and do that now. So next you're going to want to break up your spawn. You can do this by hitting the jar against a foam book, an inflated bike tire, a roll of duct tape. One thing I want to stress is do not smack the jar into your hand to break up your spawn. If and when that jar lets go, you're going to cut yourself pretty bad. You're going to need some stitches to get, to get it all closed up. I know several people who have had this happen to them. It's not a pleasant experience. So you want to be sure to wipe the transfer jar down with your 70% isopropyl alcohol after breaking up your spawn and then move on to the next section. So here's my donor jar. I've wiped it down with rubbing alcohol. I'm just making sure that the kernels are good and dispersed so that when we do make the transfer we'll have a good amount of inoculation points. So I'm going to give my hands one last spray down with isopropyl alcohol. Rearrange my jars in front of the laminar flow hood. Then I'm going to crack the donor jar open. Now I didn't notice that the lid was left behind when I do notice and go back for it. And I'm going to place the lid on top of the receiving jar to the far left. Now I'm going to open up the, the receiving jar and in one fluid motion pour from the donor jar. Close the lid. Now you want to do this as quick as possible, exposing the open jar for as short a period as possible. Here's the second jar. Close the lid. And the last jar here. So as you can see, I've used up all the spawn from my donor jar. Next, you're going to want to label your jars. It's very easy to lose track of what you have going if you do a lot of grain to grain transfers or if you have a lot of spawn going at any time. It's a good idea to label it with the strain, type of mushroom, and the date. Next we're going to give it a good shake. We're going to disperse all those colonized kernels into our uncolonized grain spawn. That way when it starts to recover it'll grow out nice and quick. Now I just move it up and down, twirl it. I'm just trying to disperse the kernels as much as possible. Uh, many people have different techniques. Take a couple times to figure out what works best for you, but just give them a good shake. So here's a picture of our jars 24 hours after inoculation. As you can see the colonized kernels are starting to recover, grow into the other grain that's surrounding it. Here is 48 hours after inoculation. As you can see the strain of oyster mushrooms is very aggressive. doesn't take very long for it to take hold and to get moving. Here is 3 days after inoculation. And finally three and a half days. This is only 12 hours after the last picture. And on day four we reached full colonization. This is the Canadian Fungi Supply H strain of Pleurotus austriatus. You can purchase from our site. It's very very aggressive. 
Thank you for watching, and be sure to check out our website at www.canadianfungi.ca.